All right, today we're talking about the close. And so this is the final step of the sale. Um, with different types of sales, you will have different rates of closing. <coughs> um, in general though, uh, you'll have one or two steps to it. It really is asking for the sale. The hardest thing for new and intermediate salespeople to do is to ask for the sale and then shut up. It's the hardest thing to do because you get down to that point, all your anxiety comes up, <clears throat> you know, especially if you're late in the month and you're behind, all that stuff stacks up. And that's probably the first thing to talk about in closing is to, to uh, compartmentalize it. And so you want to put yourself in a mental state where that's all that is present. And um, you want to push out everything else, only concentrate on that customer's needs and how you're asking for the business. So talked a little bit before about how there are different places in the sales process um, that you will ask for certain things. <clears throat> and those are kind of mini closes. So for instance, I'm walking into a uh, apartment and I'm talking to the apartment manager and I say, hey, I noticed you have these three or four problems. As I walked in today, how do you handle that? How do you and your team handle that? And then I'm not gonna say anything. Okay, because that's a mini close. What what I'm doing at that point is I am <clears throat> I'm getting them to opt in to the idea that they need my services. Okay. So that's the that's early on. And so you might do that in car sales, you might do that uh, in different places, but the point is that you want to find different uh, questions throughout your sales process where you have these mini closes. And what this does for you is it just makes your life easier at the closing point because they've already agreed with you on half a dozen or so areas. Now, don't get, don't get run into the ditch by a lot of what you hear out there is mini closes. I was trained once in one position that you get people nodding and once they start nodding, it's easier for them to say yes and harder for them to say no. That is absolute hogwash. Whoever's teaching you that, they're not doing you, a, they're not doing you uh, any favors. Nobody wants to be sold to. People want to buy, they do not want to be sold to. Now you might ask yourself at this point, well, he's talking about closing. Why, why isn't he talking more about closing right now? This is all about closing. If you don't understand that closing is only a natural byproduct of a strong sales process, which is built on solving a real problem for legitimate prospects, then you, you really don't understand the sales process. You may be looking at it as a way to solve your problem. You're not making enough sales, but you're not making enough sales for just one of two or three reasons. You don't solve a legitimate problem for a legitimate prospect. And what I mean by legitimate prospect is you're not going after the right people or you're trying to, I don't know, I don't want to say scam someone because probably most people are not trying to do that. But the reality is if, if you're selling a weak product or you're selling something that's uh, highly elective that people really don't need, but you just want to sell it or you're in a position where you'll make a big commission for selling it, you're really solving your problem, not your customer's problem. So in closing, don't look for the close to rescue you for a bad sales process. So what I mean by that is don't look at, I'm gonna go learn these closing techniques and I'm gonna do the takeaway close and that's gonna change everything. Takeaway close is strong when it's used right. Uh, it's really strong. Um, but you have to have something to take away. Uh, you know, telling somebody, hey, this won't last long. I, I, I've been in phone sales positions before when they said, you need to build urgency by saying this won't look, that, you know, we're not gonna continue this offer past this phone call. Well, I know good and well that we're going to. So I hated being forced to use that because I'm gonna tell you, hey, Mr. Prospect, uh, you gotta take this today because it probably won't be here tomorrow. And then what do you know? Sure enough, it's available tomorrow. And so false urgency, you know, fake takeaway closes 
anything to try to move the customer along just because you want them to move along, I don't have a lot of use for that. I like being in a position where I'm selling something strong for a customer who needs it. And uh, I've done my job to reveal the value to that prospect. Okay. That's where I like to be. And I think that's where everybody should be because anything else is something else. So back to closing, if you do your job in greeting, you greet the right people, you do the investigative and um, uh, research work to make sure you're talking to the right people, you do some work on them to know what their core problems are, then you have the actual conversation with the person, set the meeting and build rapport, investigate more to confirm what you pretty sure you already know. By this point, you're already partially educated. Then you present your uh, solution, your potential solution to that customer. Then you validate that by demonstrating. So we've gone through greeting, rapport building, investigation, presentation, demonstration. By midway through the demonstration point, if you're not having a prospect start, talk, to start talking themselves into closing, at least trial closing themselves. Like, yeah, we really need this. I see how this would work. I see how this would solve my problem. You're right. I think I think your application is right here. This is uncovering some things that I did not realize about what our need is. If you're not hearing things like that, you're not doing your job or you're talking to the wrong person. It's that simple. Sales is super simple because you're solving a need. And if they're not talking about the, the need, the, the, the problem you're gonna solve for them, you're, you're not in the right, you're not in the right boat. You're swimming in the wrong ocean. You've got to get in the right place, talking to the right person, solving the right problem, and you're gonna see your your uh, your clothes will be easy. It will be a matter of fact. It will be a matter of course. So I'm um, gonna talk about some applications after this, and we'll go back through and comb back through the five steps again. Um, we'll talk about things like door knocking, uh, phone sales, uh, appointment setting sales versus the appoint the appointment itself which even if you are the appointment setter and the appointment goer <laughs> uh you still have a different function there those are two different sales and you have to be aware of that so remember closing is not going to rescue a bad sales process um people are known as good closers because they close well, but knowing a bunch of closing techniques won't help a bad sales process. Now, the last thing I'll say about this is you have to be able to step up and ask for the business. That is the final close. Okay, Mr. Prospect, I've walked you through all this stuff. Uh, we've talked about what your needs are. You've identified your needs as these things. I've showed you how our product works. When do you want to sign up? How many do you want? What color do you want it to be? What does it look like for you when you buy this? And when are you ready to sign? Those are all closing questions. Most of the time, like I said, if you're doing your job right, your customer is going to start asking those questions uh, in the presentation and demonstration phases. So do the job right, do the work, be patient, and the closes will happen. Happy sales.